This week's all new episode of DC's Legends of Tomorrow was called Failsafe. Picking up from where last week's left off, Dr. Stein is now the prisoner of the Russians who hope to weaponize his firestorm research. We get a very cool and kind of funny scene wherein Stein hallucinates Cisco, only he's more polite and he's dressed nicer. You know, they never do explain how Vostok managed to make this happen, it just kind of happened and no one mentions it again. To spring their teammates from the gulag, White Canary says they need to seek the help of the Russian mafia. Oh well, looks like someone in the writer's room definitely watched Eastern Promises the night before, didn't they? I would also like to note that Rip Hunter can't even beat one chubby thug in a fair fight. Why is he leader again when his win-loss record is so one-sided? Speaking of Rip getting on my nerves, he tells White Canary if Dr. Stein cannot be saved then she needs to kill him in order to safeguard the future. Really rip, only two episodes after telling her that killing is wrong, you turn around and do this. What a massive hypocrite move. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know by the end of the episode he says, Oh, I, I knew you'd make the right choice, White Canary, but it still doesn't make him any less a dick. It's better too because by the end of the episode it's actually Captain Cold who tells her that she has a choice and she doesn't have to be a killer if she doesn't want to. Really, when the super thief of your group gives better heroic advice than your quote-unquote lead, you got problems. Problems. The one genuinely smart thing Rip does during Failsafe is decide to bench Jax and Hot Girl as they would be more of a hindrance than an asset on this mission. Not that they listen to this otherwise good advice, of course. Furthermore, is it just me or does it seem that Rip sits on the ship a lot, like 90% of the time while everyone else is out risking their necks for his crusade? And don't say, oh, he's got a run back end on the ship. He's got a super AI. I'm pretty sure that could do the whole tech side of things if need be. Now, don't don't take all of this the wrong way, because you see, Failsafe, believe it or not, was probably one of the best episodes they've had so far. Perhaps my favorite stuff was Adam trying to win the approval of Heatwave while in prison. Something you might not think Ray Palmer ever wanted, but his fancy rich guy bumbling around the Hard Knocks prison was fun. As far as Heatwave goes, his relationship with Captain Cold has gone far past bromance, if you ask me, into something else entirely. All throughout Failsafe, Cold says, I need to get my partner back, my partner this, my partner partner that, and Heatway says that the only team he's on is Snarts. Ooh, ooh my. If that doesn't get a bunch of fanfic pens out there writing, then I certainly don't know what will. Also, hey, points to Wentworth Miller for saying that this is not my first prison break. Now, Vandal Savage, after being absent last week, did show up here, and I must say the show is much stronger with his presence. Granted, he's not the big villain of the piece. That turned out to be a Vostok Russian firestorm. FYI, Vostok is the name of a couple comics make characters, but this evil lady Firestorm is pretty new. Granted, she didn't last all that long as Jax wins back Dr. Stein by reminding him about the power of friendship. It's super cheesy stuff, but as I've said before, Jack's actor really seems to excel with those kinds of scenes. In the end, our hero's celebration in Russia is cut short when they end up getting sent to an alternate history star city where they had failed. One that just so happens to be protected by, oh, 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 wow, is that freaking Connor Hawk? I think it might be, and also, why is his costume way better than Arrow's? Failsafe is an episode that proved to me how good Legends of Tomorrow could be when it's firing on, yeah, let's say most of its cylinders. The team actually does work as a team this episode, no Mavericks going off script. The stakes are high and the action was cool. The only real letdown is Rip himself. Hopefully they cure that in the next episode, which I'm excited for and which I hope can keep up momentum. Overall, I would give this one a 7 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll feel like checking out some more videos I have on offer here at Cape Jewel.